and then my let's start it. <laughs> so if we just like, if you can like open the software and then let's see if anybody has like difficulties with it. I don't know, is this tutorial two now? Or? No, 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 it's going to be the one. Yeah, let's like swing briefly like a way to flag. Yeah, anybody have like difficulties opening like QGIS or installing it? So what you're gonna see when you when you open it, it's gonna be basically you can like so this is like a window here in the center, this like big part here is gonna be where your map's gonna be displayed, and here it's gonna be like your layer information. So for example, I'm gonna have like the layer administrative units, and I'm gonna have a layer of roads, and I'm gonna have a layer of villages, etc. Cases, points of road. So everything gonna be displayed here, your map, and then your layers. And then here, what you have is just like the different functionality. So for the functionality, just like really briefly, because we're gonna detail them like uh, after. But what you have, you have like file edit, which is really like normal uh, functionality, like to save a project, to open a new project. Then you've got like view, which is like some option about zooming. At um, so just like showing briefly, if you just like go uh, with your mouse and look a little bit at the top, um, at the top of your uh, the different function, and we're gonna like go like through them like during the day anyway, but just like to show you like really quickly. So if you go like with view, you've got like some zoom in, zoom out, layer. It's like what we're gonna be playing with a different like layer of information. Then you're gonna have like settings when you want like to work with your project properties. So when we talk about this morning, for example, the different projection. Then plugin, that's what we mentioned about the idea that the architecture can be like modified um, by adding different plugins. Database, um, I don't know. Vector, then it's, um, it's what you're gonna be able to do with your vector information. So polygon, points, or lines, for example. And then here, if you just like click on it, you see, for example, you can have an analysis tools and do like some distance matrix or, um, do like some nearest neighbor analysis. You've got like geoprocessing tools, etc. So here it's quite, it's quite nice actually this function. That's why I wanted to like, insist a little bit on it because we're not gonna see, we're not gonna see like all the different function here, but only like some of them. But basically by using that, you're gonna be able like, to do like a lot of little special calculation or special analysis with that. Then raster is everything that contains in raster, and then you've got your help online. And everything that you have here is just. I mean, the equal corresponding like, to the function uh, above. And that's all I wanted to say about the software before we start the tutorial. Any question? Perfect. Hmm? Okay, so we're going to start uh, tutorial one, which is about um, getting, de getting spatial data and the different type, type of spatial data that will, you will be dealing with uh, if you use uh, JNS. So that's how it, it looks like. Do you all have a printed copy? Mm -hmm. And the, fir the first part of the case study, I'm, I'll let you uh, go along maybe by yourself or in, by, you know, in small groups and um, every 15, 10 minutes we'll do a summary on, on the board. So the first time will be uh, the first part will be how to get uh, vector data, namely the, the, the boundaries, the admin boundaries of, um, of the district at the district level for Germany. And for this, we'll be using the shape file provi fully provided by the Eurostat uh, website, which uh, so was uh, uploaded on the website of EIN, and you should have a copy of that. Now, just before we start, uh, so you all already opened your, your software. Now, good, good practice in all, in all kind of um, data management environment is to, to be uh, quite strict on a working directory. So I will just show you how I organized my, the data I will be using those two days and make sure that you also have your own strict way of organizing the data. So what I put, I saved all the data in computer, C, 
C drive uh, folder called data. I have different projects here, and I saved the data for this module in a folder that I call GIS module. And it's in GIS material, which you should have downloaded, and we have the four, the four folders corresponding to the four tutorials. So the data we'll be using this morning is included in tutorial one. Data. Okay, so be, sh be, be sure that you save the data in, in a working directory that you, that you want to and so you will always refer to that working directory and that's where you will save the output files uh, and so on, the results of your analysis. Actually, I might simplify this. <coughs> so I will be working on this, this today and tomorrow in C data GIS module and today this morning tutorial one data <coughs> And you can start. Uh, you can start with the case study. The, the aim of this first section will be to to have at the end a base map of the German districts, level three, where uh, you you would be able to map. We won't do it uh, during this case study, but you'll we'll be able to map your surveillance data. So we really want to get spatial data base maps for the particular area of interest. So in a sense, we're starting a project. We're starting a project, and we, we will start the project by importing the data. Um, there are two ways to import uh, spatial data in QGIS. You can use the menu. We don't have to set before the setting coordinate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We no? okay. yeah, but, yeah. Okay. okay, let's try with the... No, the, sorry. The, yeah, yeah it, it's written. It says, yeah. Yeah. As I said in, in, the, in this morning lecture, the first thing you want to check is the, uh, the type of data you're going to use and its mm -hmm. coordinate system, its datum and projection. The data provided by the, by the Eurostat, uh, by the Eurostat uh, office uh, has a PRG file as, uh, attached to it and if you, in that PRG file there's, uh, there's the definition of the spatial reference of the data. And in this case, it's using so lat long, so the geographical coordinate system. Uh, it's using the um, European datum, the ETRS 99, and the unit is degree. So the actual data provided to you there is not actually projected. You will have to project it when you import it there, but it's not projected yet. It's using the lat long and this European datum, which is very closely related to the. WGS for that two. Because we already um, uh, anticipate the fact that we'll be importing other data, not just that one from Eurostat, I will set my spatial reference my, my, and my projection to a common one which is uh, widely used uh, and it's called the, uh, so it's the W, it's used as the WGS84 datum and a plat carré projection and it uses the geographical coordinate system and I do this by going into setting, can you all see there on the screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Setting project properties <coughs> this, is, this is the window that, co that, comes, that comes to the screen mm -hmm. and I will select the enable on the fly uh, coordinate reference system transformation meaning that all data that I will import into QGIS will be projected in, in the projection I will now define, which is actually in QGS, QGIS, the default one. It's this one here, w, WGS84. Okay. Translation. 
And so it's classified as a geographic coordinate system. It uses lat long. And you have to go under W, it's, alpha, it's uh, ordered by al alphabetical uh, order. And it's called WGS84. It has a code assigned to it, used by a petroleum group, which has a database <coughs> with a code, and it's the code 4326, okay? So this, this is the, uh, the spatial reference of my project. Uh, Thomas, I have a yes. question. There might be an ambiguity here, because when I scroll up to get ETRS89, uh, this has a different EPSG number. If you scroll up to EPRS... Yeah, you could, you could, Florian, Florian, is, Florian has uh, selected this one, which is a, a European TRS89 datum. You could use this one, uh, which might be in that in that case might be more appropriate because that's the datum used by the shape file that you provided with. Uh, I, I I chose the other one because I know that I will import GPS points, which are using the World Geodesic 84 datum. Because in the notes it says ETRS 89 and it refers to the EPSG number of the. VGS84. Yes. Yeah, so what you mean is the VGS84 with the EPSG number 4326. What I mean is that you can you can perfectly set up your you can per per set, perfectly set up your project your project projection using the, the European 89 datum. Okay. Okay. You can do that, meaning that any data will then be harmonized uh, according to this datum and this projection, which is a plat carré projection. Yes, no. Now, two things. This is almost the same, actually it's practically the same as the WGS84 datum. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that I'm already anticipating the fact that I will import GPS points that will be using the WGS84 datum. So in other words, it's, it's a bit up to you to choose which projection to choose at the beginning. I advise you to choose for that particular case study the w, WGS84, which has this corresponding code, you don't need to know it by heart, and you apply, you apply this on-the-fly uh, reference system. So just say OK? So you, yeah, you just say okay, apply, and okay. Okay? Can you say again what on the fly means? On the fly means that uh, you, you apply that type of projection and coordinate system to the project as a whole, and when you will be importing external data, it will make sure that it's projected in a similar way as the one you have just defined. It automatically reproject the, the coordinate system of your additional data to the to the system that you have selected for the project. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, reproject. Mm -hmm. So you have a UTM. The the software will change automatically to latitude longitude because this is the coordinate system that you have selected for your project. So I just selected on the fly CRS transformation and I picked up on the list WGS84 which goes under geographic coordinate system and I simply apply and press OK. Now you can import your first shape file into the GIS, into the view, which will be a shapefile um, giving you the admin boundaries of the EU members, provided by Eurostat. Yeah. So what I will do now, I will go to my working directory where I save that data, and I will import that file, the shape file. There are two ways to do that. You can use the menu, as uh, I will say, layer, add vector layer, 
or you can simply press on that button here, which is the I icon, the corresponding icon on the view, add vector layer. I press on add vector layer and I go and search in my working directory the shape file I want to open. So remember mine was uh, saved on the data, C data, GIS module, tutorial one, data. And in this working directory, there are two shape files, actually. You should have two shape files, uh, both from Eurostat. One is uh, the nuts uh, at a scale of, three, of uh, one, by, uh, one to three million. The other one has a smaller scale of one to 60 million. Let's start by loading, by importing the one which has the scale of one to 60 million. So I select, I select the file. Yeah. yeah, you can choose. You can choose any. Let's, if in if in the notes it's three, we we'll start with three. Sorry, I don't know it by heart. Uh, so, so you can you can double click or select and press open. And you open, and you see if it works. Take some time. It's not a. It's not a. Um, a light. And so you you have just loaded the the, the first shape file of the case study, which is a vector vector data, <laughs> giving you. Anyone? I started with three. 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 Oh, right. And the first thing I usually do, you see, okay, you see it has opened the layer, the window on the view, you have the map, the actual map, the vectors, and here you have the name of the layer. Okay? Now just just take a few a few minutes to uh, explore explore the view by for, for example by using the, the zoom in option. I want to zoom into Germany. So it's one layer, it's one layer giving you the polygons corresponding to the different administrative boundaries in the EU. And all three degrees is the zoom. More you zoom, more the distance is. There's a yeah, right side. There's a scale here, which gives you the the, 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 the scale of the map of the view in the units that, I, that is used by this projection, which is here in the lat long, so it's in degrees. We're not working in meters, because the projection is, uh, is, is far carré, but using the geographical coordinate system. So it simply plots the, the, the y and x coordinates on a Cartesian uh, reference system, but keeping its degrees, it's only, it's, we're working with degrees. You don't have that scale? You don't have this, if you don't have the scale, you can make it appear by, by clicking on the point in this button here. There should be a little icon here with the scale, or you can go... Now, before, before, before I leave you and work a little bit on the case study by yourself, just one, one thing which is common to all shape files and uh, very important in GIS, is you can there's to each to each unit there's a there's a line corresponding to a line in a table and that's the DBF file that is behind every shape file and in QGIS you can open that attribute table as we call it uh, corresponding to that layer by clicking on that icon open attribute table 
So you have to select you have to select the layer uh, which you want to open the table, and you click on that icon here. Okay, and you you can view the corresponding attribute table, which by the way has 1,927 uh, features units. <coughs> Each line corresponding to a polygon. If I want to add information to that table, would it be easy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go we'll go through that a bit later on. You can you can edit the table, which is not really recommended because you, you don't want to uh, might not want to edit the, the Eurostat table, but you can import the external table containing your epi epidemiological data. And just to, to make sure that you understand well that there is a link between the table and uh, geographical information, you can actually select you can select some uh, you can select manually some some uh, some units from the table by by clicking. Some units and they should they should appear on the map in yellow. So I can select one uh, geographical feature corresponding to the line here in the table. And a quick way to zoom in to that selected feature is to press on the button Zoom to Selection. Okay? He's going to show it right now. It's another island. This one is in the... In Spain, please. It's in Spain. <laughs> it's in Spain. So you see there's a direct, direct link between the attribute table and, uh, and the, the geographical features. Have, have a try, explore the data and try to import on the same view the second shape file, so the one which has the geographical information with a different scale. So to import the second shape file, I do the same. I do the same process. I go to uh, add vector layer. I go and browse to my working directory, which I defined earlier, which is data gis module tutorial one data, to make sure that I'm I'm not uh, going uh, in the wrong place, and I double click on the second shape file, and it should appear in the view. Takes a bit of time, and it appeared on the view. The join option is not implemented. It seems to be exactly the same. So probably in this version. 
It's actually almost the same. You have to select how to For me, So I, I have I've uploaded only. Okay, I can remove I can remove a layer anytime by right clicking on the layer and remove. If I go back to my working directory. I will open the two shape files at the same time. Mm -hmm. Which one is displayed then? Uh, okay, that's a very good question, Matthias. Which one is displayed? The one which is at the top is the top layer, the one you will see. But if, you, if both are selected, both are displayed. So the, the one is displayed, the, the second one is, the, is displayed uh, underneath. Okay? So that's why when you zoom in, Uh, you, zoom, you zoom in somewhere on the coast. Like, let's go to Brittany. Like, you can see, you can see that you can see that the two layers, the two layers are displayed. What you view, the first one is the nut uh, 60 million, and the second one is the nut 30 million. How do I select the layers? <laughs> <laughs> Select the layer by just clicking on them. So this no, 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 the first. How do I say you already selected? Go to, go to uh, add vector layer. Okay, so no, no, I don't Browse your working directory. No, she's done that already, that's not the question. I just oh, wanted him to finish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to, what do you want to do? No, 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 I, I thought it was something. Something different than what you were just showing before. So you download it? Ah, you need to establish the shape. Yeah. 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 So they they perfectly match. Yeah. 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 So if I don't want if I don't want to view one of the layers, I just I just deselect it on the view. Okay. I remember that I don't know to do it. square here is to make it visible, to make it appear in the view. So if I don't want to, if I don't want to, um, I will zoom out again, I will zoom to the layer. Sometimes it bugs. If I only want to view the, the one with the scale, the, 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 big, the, the, the smaller scale, the, the biggest scale, the biggest scale, so corresponding to one over three million, I just select that one, that layer. But why they are different? They're different because I was just trying to illustrate the, the point that some, some, the scale of some of the, the data might be different, although it's covering the same area and somehow giving you the same information. So the detail might be, the scale of the, of the base might be different. So in this case, you will probably... Yes. This is it, the one that is on top. The first one. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm This is referring to when the map was drawn, one centimeter was corresponding to three million centimeters in red. Or one centimeter was referring to 60 million centimeters in reality. So the one to three million was more precise. <laughs> <laughs> so I will I will remove from the view I will keep the the one to three million scale I will remove from the view the sixty million and I'm I'm I will carry on just working on that that shape that layer. Boundaries of the EU at the final scale, <laughs> which has this corresponding attribute table.
Maybe just one word uh, before I continue, if I zoom in, let's say, to Spain. <coughs> Over here on the on the layer, what you see are the finest the finest level of the administrative boundaries. That is not level three. This shape file and therefore the attribute table also contains information on level two and level one. Okay, so actually that shape file also contains a polygon that corresponds to Spain as a whole and to the, reg the regions of Spain, not just the district. And that's why when you open the attribute table and you select, you select an area that corresponds to level one, that's a, the state level. So I've, I've selected Spain, if I'm not mistaken. No, I haven't. Spain is here. I've selected the polygon corresponding to SES, that's Spain, for the state uh, for the level zero, which is the, the whole country. And if I zoom into the to the appropriate polygon, it, it gives me the whole of Spain. Although it's not visually selected on the map, it tells you that there's actually a polygon corresponding to the whole of Spain. So, uh, so no, Norbert asked, what about adding adding information to the attribute table? Attribute, attribute table. <coughs> As you can see here, we have we have um, six, seven, seven variables attached to each um, each polygon. And as you can see, there is no there is no name. For instance, you have ID code, but you don't have a name. So one one thing one thing that you might want to do is to import and to join another table to that attribute table. Attribute table. And this is what we're going to do next. Okay. So I can zoom out again, I, can I select the layer and I can press on the button here that says zoom to layer. So it will again show me the whole layer on the view. And I want to attach to that table another table, which is also provided by Eurostat, which contains the name, for instance, the name of the, of the different units. In most of our case, the, the table that we will import, and we will do that uh, uh, this afternoon or maybe even this morning with, uh, with Arnaud, will be a table containing the health data. And uh, the information with the names of all these units is, in, is contained in a DBF file. Which is also in your working directory. You have to import per we can, which I can view by uh, add vector layer. This table. So and in this case, uh, okay. uh, in so this case, I will not import a shape file. I will import a DVF table, DVF table. which is the nuts at 2006 dot DBF. Okay, it's not a shape file. This is a DBF file, so it's only a table. But it's a table that I will merge, that I will join to my existing table of, of uh, EU boundaries. Okay, so I select that table. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. I import that table. 
And it should appear. It should appear in the view. Okay. It's not. It's not a layer. It's not a geographical layer. It's a TBF table. You can visualize it. You can visualize it and actually what it contains. It contains the same number of lines, so it's for the same number of units, but it contains some more information, namely in this case the actual name, the actual name of the different units. Okay, so now this is more data management, so there's no real uh, GIS skills into it. You just want to merge the two tables using a unique ID key, which in this case will be nuts underscore ID. Yes, Katia? Uh, you, where you found this table? You see in the same data uh, link of the European uh, stuff? Yeah, I went to my working directory. No, 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 no. I, now, uh, yeah, in general. Uh, yeah, it's on the yeah. website. In the website. Yeah, they have zip files for the shape files, and they also have zip files for the all the information stored in DBF access, access databases. Okay, thanks. That's just one of them that I've extracted. Okay, so I get the table again. Uh, to join to join the table, it's written on the handout, but I will show it to you on the screen. You right click, you right click on the layer. So this time the geographical layer, and you go to uh, properties. So these are different properties windows um, for your for your shape file, and you go to the one called joints, and you will add you will add a joint table by clicking on the plus button, and you will have to define the join layers, which is. In our case, the DBF table we just imported, the NUTS Act 2006, uh, 2006, yeah? And the join field, if you remember well, but I'm telling you it's NUTS ID, so it's the ID, unique ID used by the uh, Eurostat uh, agency to identify any admin uh, um, unit in the EU. Target field is the one is the one on the shape on the DBF corresponding to the shape. So there are two in the two tables. You have to define which field in both tables will use the join. In our case, the team is not That's the field in the DBF table. The key field in the, in the DBF table, that's the key field in the DBF from the shape file. Okay? They, might, they might not be named the same, but in this case they're named the same. The first one, the target field is the... The join field is coming from my DBF table, that I imported. All, all people using Mac can see this option in the property window. Yeah? Because in, ver in version, in version 1.6, this is not implemented in the property. No, so in version 1.6, it differs. You need to go to vector. Yeah, you need to. You need to. Yeah. <laughs> So I just carry on on that that version of, and then I'll come back and maybe the match gets sorted. And you can join the year and different the Yeah, you leave the default uh, options. 
and you apply it to make it to make it hopefully work. Okay. 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 If you apply, you don't need the window, so you can still work on your window. Are you okay? <laughs> window. okay. But if you forget to press apply, it doesn't matter. You can see. Well, have a look. If you now, if it worked properly, if you open the, the attribute attribute table of the shape file, the shape. You should now have the names attached to it. Okay. Yes. The last, uh, call. Yeah, the last, the last variables are, the, are new variables that have been just joined. Okay. No, if I if I want if I want to sort if I want to sort the table by the name of the of the district, I just for instance click I click on the head of the name uh, A S. Did you click in the to create an index or not? And if you sort the, the it will sort the names by alphabetic order. Okay. But it's not, I mean, it's not an issue. You can delete the folder. So let's see. You can delete it. Let's see where we are here. Should we add it? You need to edit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Should we add this bag? It doesn't matter. Okay. Maybe I can delete it. No. So now. It's a huge table. It takes time. Okay, then I should delete it. I'll do it there. If you want to delete it, it's not okay. You can leave it. Okay. It's just a new field in your database. You see here? Yeah. You have different options. Yeah, you can select the town. I selected here the town. If I if I if I zoom if I zoom the selection. <laughs> so it zoomed. You can see that I selected. By doing this, I selected the, the right, uh, the right district. Okay, so... Okay, one more. Uh, another feature... Another feature uh, quite useful in GIS in general is that you can, you can use a tool to, um, to uh, identify the, uh, the attributes, attributes, features of any of any feature on the map by using <laughs> by using the identify feature uh, icon. If I press on identify feature icon, I can zoom, let's say, back to the to to Stuttgart city, and I will use that tool to visualize to visualize some attributes, variables, data related to the polygon I pressed on. Okay? So here, actually, by pressing on Stuttgart uh, city, I actually, actually, I selected more than one polygon in this case. I selected the polygon uh, representing Germany, Deutschland, I selected the polygon representing Baden-Württemberg, which I think is this one here. I selected the polygon representing Stuttgart uh, district. And finally, the smallest scale, Stuttgart city. So that's just to make you understand that in that particular shape file from Eurostat, you actually have the feature. You have all the different levels united on one one shape file. Sorry, you did it in. Yeah. Sorry. The 
Yeah, sorry, this, this video. <laughs> so with this, little, this little tool is quite useful, so you can just click on any feature of the map, and it will, it will give you not the attribute table, but the information corresponding to that particular unit. Okay? So it's a nice, it's a nice exploratory tool. And you can do that for any so you can click on the any polygon on the map. But you have always to go by the table uh, table table or you, you just can select and then uh, this is done without uh, without opening the attribute table. I'm just using that directly on the on the cube. Yeah. No, you can go it's not <laughs> so you go to uh, this, this, this tool here. <laughs> okay, in this example, I don't have any health data, but you can imagine that you might very easily import uh, epi demographic data and visualize them from the view using that tool. <laughs> okay, that's because you probably selected um, a unit which is not the smallest unit, but it's the country unit or the district which should get city travel student. Which is the unit you selected? Okay, so you've all opened, you managed to open a shape file, you managed to, uh, to uh, explore the map. Okay, so did you manage to, to join the tables? Yes. Now, um, important thing to do when you do such things is to, to save to save the, the, the steps that you've been that you've been doing. So I'm gonna save I'm gonna save the, the new file with the, the the additional information into a new shape file mm -hmm. by right clicking on the on the layer and selecting save as I will save it in the working directory and I will name it EU 
admin maybe 2006. Mm -hmm. It will take the that woman geographical coordinate system of the of the of the project of the layer, and I press OK. So the new shape file I've just created is is the same as the as the previous one, but with the additional attribute information. So the DBF extension, the DBF uh, the DBF uh, new var the new variables in the DBF is included, and I can import I can import this new this new shapefile which is now saved in my directory now. Okay? Which is in fact now the same as nuts LG. Yeah, visually it will be the same. It's just that this one was not uh, saved in hard copy as a new as a new as a new layer. I can actually close Yes, it does. So you have to go back to the car and Yeah, Yeah, Okay, so I'm, um, let's say we're working for the, we working for RKI, or at least the German Public Health Institute. And we want to map surveillance data for Germany only. Okay, so we don't, uh, we don't really care about other member states. We just want to focus on Germany, and we have to have a nice base map of German districts only. So we can do that by opening the attribute table. So that's the attribute table uh, with the new uh, joint uh, variables, and you go to advanced. Advanced search. Okay. Advanced search. Okay. Sur search. So here again, I'm just doing data management. I will restrict. I will restrict my my file to Germany only, and I can do that by creating a, a, a very simple query, whereby I will select. I will select um, features which have a country code that corresponds to Germany. By clicking on one of the variables here and by pressing sample, I can have a list of the values corresponding to that variable. I'm interested in restricting the map or the selection right now to the country code, uh, feature, uh, the features for which the country code is equal to Germany, so is equal to DE for Deutschland. So the query will be to select the selected country code. Country code. I can double click on country code. Is equal to Deutschland. Okay. So I'm just using the, the data management tool in of the attribute table to select all the districts and regions and, and lander and borders of Germany only because I'm a German epidemiologist. I can I can test the query. To see if it's if it works, it works. It found uh, 485 matching features, and I press OK. Now, if I if I if it worked correctly, it would have selected all those 485 features, and I could see them. I think I can see them on the map. If I'm correct. So I've, I've just selected on the map all the units corresponding to Germany. If I, if I want to save this selection as a new shape file, I'll again go to the layer. 
and instead of save as, I will go to save selection as. Okay? So we create a new shape file, restricting, restricted to this to this country, to Germany. Okay? I want to save it in my working directory and I can call it Germany. So I just saved I just saved the, the new selection as a new shape file by selecting right clicking on the layer and selecting save selection as. Okay? Exactly. It will automatically create the, the uh, at least three files, the shape file, the DBF, the SHX and the projection in this case because there's uh, there's information on the datum and the coordinate system. Well, let's actually let's check. Huh? I mean, if I go to my working directory, data, this module, tutorial one, data. Mm -hmm. So it has created what we call shape files, but it's actually different files with different extensions. And actually, let's let's see if I can view that new f new shape file. I go to open new vector layer. I select Germany admin, and I open it. And I close I close the previous the previous uh, one. Actually, I can deselect. It doesn't matter actually. I will close it. And that's that's the file resulting file. <laughs> it, it does look it has the funny shape, doesn't it? It's a bit skewed, and that's due to the plat carré projection. That uh, is probably not not the projection you most you most uh, used to. But it contains it contains the. Contains the same attribute table for for Germany only. Sure. So you you the shape files you created are now saved. They exist uh, independently of the project. They are saved in a working directory. But it might be a good idea to save the project as a whole also. So yeah, you can you can close the project and come back to it, and the same layers will be loaded automatically. And to do that, you simply go to File. Save project as. Again, good practice is to use the same working directory and to name it. I will name it Schubert. So now, if I close the project, I close the, the software. I reopen it. I can I can go and get back to the same project with the same layers already opened. Mm -hmm. 